Okay, so I've just drawn another stair here that has um, a layout that maybe makes more sense than the L shape, also the U shaped one that I've done above. So I'll delete that. And I'm going to move this one up into position. So I just wanted to finish off with stairs to show you uh, a couple of other little things that uh, are going to be helpful when you're working with stairs. Um, and the first one's probably the most important. Uh, you've got the shaft tool, which I know a lot of you might have used, but if you uh, haven't seen that there in the opening panel, that is a good one to know about. So, uh, well, that's, that's a good panel with uh, a lot of other good tools as well. So have a look at all of them. You'll see that there might be some others there that you haven't used, like the, the dormer tool, really good. And uh, even that, that vertical opening tool is not bad. But uh, again, this one here, shaft, really useful for things like lift shafts and also uh, stairs which are going to project through the building. So you can see here I've got the stairs maybe set up so that they'll need a projecting area here. And I don't need to draw that in to work out my shaft, but I will just roughly put something in so you know what I'm trying to make. So with this configuration they will need to come out slightly. But if you're thinking that I should instead rotate those stairs and have, him, have them going the other way, uh, you need to be careful of that because the length, I'm sure you can work these things out but just to maybe give you a little tip, the, um, the length there of the stair plus the landing is greater than the distance from here to here. So that means if you were to put the stair and try to have it going this direction, that it would go beyond the grid line and you'd have to cut one of your beams to put your stairs in. So I'm just going to watch out for things like that. Um, and I know you can take out some of these beams and uh, also you can even take columns out and replace the, uh, one of them with a beam. But you need to know uh, what structural changes need to be made when you, when you do things like that. And uh, it's much easier, of course, if you don't need to make those changes. So with a fire stair, you don't want to be making too many changes to your structure if you can help it. And uh, so just try to make sure you have the stair inside the grid line so it'll be much easier then. And so same with my shaft. So I'm trying to put the hole through the whole building. But remember I've got the... Uh, the stair here on the ground floor uh, needed to go higher than the stair on the next level. So I'm going to make a shaft now. It's fairly easy. Once you've got the stair, click on shaft. And you can use pick walls. Or you can draw any of the other shape options you have there. But I'll use pick walls. And I'm going to pick the walls that I have either side of my stairs. When this happens, do you know why that sometimes goes on the wrong side? To do with the direction of your walls and also sometimes if you have this option here turned on. So uh, you can try flipping, but you might see in some situations that it um, flips other lines. So if those things are causing too much trouble, just draw the things you need using the shapes up here. So instead of using pick walls, if it isn't working, just either draw lines or use pick lines. So there I've got the basic outline that I want and I'll join those lines together using trim to corner. I'm going to leave this part because I want to just draw in some extra lines there and go around the column. So I've drawn the shape of the shaft opening that I need. Now I'm just going to have a look at my levels and you can see that it's got a base constraint and that is on ground floor and then the base offset is minus 150. I'm going to change that base offset to um, 150 and you'll see what, what that number does in a minute. 
and then the top constraint I'm going to change to level 1 and I'm going to make the top offset 100. That could have been 150, it doesn't really matter as long as it's above. So what that means is my hole or my void is going to start 150 above the ground floor and then finish 150 above level 1. So I'm going to finish that and then we'll just have a look at it in section. As okay, so you can see then it's cut a hole in my floor. Do you know any other ways of doing that? There is another way that's just as easy actually. If you put a hole in your floor just by selecting your floor and then opening up on the level usually that it sits on, going to edit boundaries, I'll just draw a rectangle, tick to finish, that makes a hole in my floor as well. So this is a hole, that's a hole. I made this one with the shaft tool, this one is part of the floor. That's right, exactly. That's, that's the main point. So it's fine if you're only doing one level, but if it needs to go over multiple levels, then the shaft tool is usually better. So I'm going to undo that. Um, also, with the shaft tool, I can tie the opening more easily to things like these walls. So if these walls move later, then the shaft is going to change with the wall. And I can even tie the shaft to my stairs. So shafts have a, a few advantages, but they're most useful where you're working with many levels. And so I'm going to delete the stair I made earlier and then go on to level one and just show you now that we can see the stair coming up from the ground floor. And now I can show you a few other little tricks. I'm going to make another shaft on this level as well. But before I do, I just want to show you a few of the um, graphical conventions that you have with stairs. Okay, so the first one is the arrow. So which way should the arrow go on a stair? Up, always up, that's right. Which way do they do it in America? Both ways. They do it both ways, just to be confusing. They do up and down. And that's why they always label it. So, yeah, that's just the way it is. So, that's why the rabbit stairs come in like that. So, you've got down here. So, that means that arrow is... I never really understand it with American stairs. I have to look on the ground floor and see what it's doing. Uh, so, here, that's up. So, it is one. That arrow is pointing down. It doesn't... Uh, it's just not logical at all to me, but that's the way it is. So here, DN is at the beginning of that line and it comes all the way around and then that arrow is pointing down to the bottom. So this is the start of the stair here. I just can't even look at that. It just confuses me. So um, they've given you the option when you select any stair, if it's been made with stair by sketch, you can just tick this option here. Show up arrow in all views. So now you can see it tells you it's an up arrow. We don't need that text though because we know if we see an arrow without any label, it's pointing up. So the other option then is that you can also, when that stair's selected, just turn the up label off altogether. You don't need that. If there's no label, it's assumed that it's up. So that's pretty much um, all you need to get the arrow showing up as well as it can. Now, if you're fussy, and you should be with your drawings, if you're fussy um, and you worry about getting the arrow to be the right length and, and basically uh, having it show perfectly, if you know the way that it should show, there are a couple of little glitches you'll notice along the way. Um, and uh, if you really want to make that work perfectly, then you need to look at using the new, new tool. So stair by component gives you a different way of doing that run or the arrow, and, uh, and it does work a little bit better, I've got to say. So uh, we'll, we'll look at that later anyway, but uh, if you're interested or if you're worried about getting your arrows to be perfect, then uh, have a look at the new tool. It does give you a few other options. But like I said, that's pretty much all we need for now, so getting the arrow the right way. And then um, 
because I showed you how to draw stairs on different levels before, what I'll show you now is how to copy stairs from one level to another, which is a good thing to know. So I'm going to select this stair and copy the clipboard. Now I'm going to go click under paste, align to current view. So I've put a copy of the stair on this level, but looking in properties you can see that it's actually gone to the level that it started on. So I just need to go in here and change the levels to level 1 and level 2. And now I've brought the stair up. Okay, so it's fitting over exactly. So that's a good little trick. If, if you have levels that are different heights, but you want to have the same stair and just make that stair adjust its height on each or between each of those levels, that's all you need to do. Copy and paste. And uh, so here, this new staircase has 24 risers, just like the previous one. Don't worry that it says 25, it's actually 24. Um, again, it's because of the monolithic thing. And the difference is here that it's notice it's got the extra step that's in line with the floor. That's right, yeah, well it's your last step. In a concrete stair, technically that is, that's the way they would build it. But, uh, but you wouldn't count that as a riser because it's, Yes, the floor. So, again, just one of those little things to watch out for. But the main thing I was showing you there is that the height there, 168, is less than the min oh, sorry, is yeah, less than it could be. So, what do you think I could do if I want to make this stair have a higher riser height? Um, I could. Oh, oh yeah, I'll go the other way. Yeah. So I want to shorten the stairs. So by making the risers higher, then I'll have less steps, less risers. So, um, so I'm going to go back into plan with the stair selected and just show you how you can uh, reduce the risers once you've made a stair. Go edit sketch. And if you've got that blue line, remember that's your run line, you can select it and then stretch it just by snapping to each step. So I've stretched it there and it's all still joined together and now I'll get this one and stretch it again just by stretching that blue line to the next step. And I'm going to go down here and look at my riser count now. You can see it's got 25 still, but the actual number is 23. So I'm going to reduce the desired number down to 23 as well. And it's telling me I can't do that. So it's desired number of risers is too small. Now I've got a feeling Revit's actually making a mistake there. So I'm just going to finish it and then go back into it. Sometimes you have to do that. And let's see if I go back down. Oh no, okay, so it is, oh no, so it's, so it's one more. So it's 24. So it's again that monolithic thing. Did I forget? There we go. So I'm just trying to take it down as low as it can go. So I've got 24 as my desired numbers. The actual number is 23. So what do I need to do? Yeah, I need to change the actual number. So I've told Revit I want 24 risers. That's going to give me a riser height of 25, of 175. But I've only drawn 23. So I need to add one riser either to the beginning or the end. So it doesn't really matter which end in this case, I'll maybe add it to the beginning. So now you, go, you can see in here, desired number is the same as actual number. I'll finish that. It's only one step different, so I could have probably left it with the original stair, but I just wanted to make sure you know how to change the number of risers. And so then I could make a shaft that uh, follows this shape. So maybe I will just do that just as an example. Probably wouldn't make sense. You probably would just use the shaft coming from the level below. But I will just show you as an example. So I'm going to go make a new shaft. And then I can't see the, uh, the stair, so I just need to go to wireframe. And oh no, sorry, that's, sorry, it's not wire. 
so the stair finishes here. Remember, so I'm going to draw along this line. And what's going to happen there? Okay, so I'll take it to here. Now, I could be using pick walls. I'm just doing this to save time. Okay, so that's the shape of my opening from level one up to the roof. So I don't want it to go through the roof, so I'm going to set up to level roof as my top constraint. And then I'm going to set the top offset to minus uh, 500, just in case I have a ceiling or something underneath my roof. So it's going to finish 500 below my roof level. And so I'll just finish that now. I'm going to go and look in the section. So there we are. So we've got, and now this stair is only going up to the next level because I haven't set multi story, but I'll just do that now in properties. So I'll just take that up to level 6 for now. Okay, so you can see then this hole here is being made by the first shaft that starts on the ground floor. And it can be a bit tricky finding those, but if you hover near the edge of the hole that it cuts, you should be able to find it. So I have to make it a bit clearer. When you can see the shaft, so you can see that it starts above ground floor, goes up to just above level one. And then the next shaft starts above that level. Could have been up here, it doesn't matter, as long as it's above that level. Finishes all the way up here, just below the roof. Now, you can see then that some of these things might not lo look the way you'd expect them to. You can, well, there are ways of resolving it. And if you were making a, um, you know, an access stair, a public st or a stair that's in the, the, the lobby or something like that, then you might model all of these extra parts in 3D because they'll be visible. But if it's just in your fire stairs, then there's an easier way of fixing these little problems. What would you do if you're in section and you want to fix that? So the, the issue, I've got if you're not sure what I'm talking about, it's the fact that this line here underneath the stair really should continue down and connect to the floor at the bottom. Or at least there should be something underneath the stair. The stair looks like it's floating with nothing under it. So, what could you do if you don't want to model? You, you'd, hope, you'd think it would. I mean, this has been a problem for years in Revit, so you'd think they would have done something like that to make it easier. But what I've found is that um, modeling it in 3D is uh, a bit of work. And if you only need to do it in a section in 2D like this, just do a region. So, you can do a filled region with um, the right pen. So I'll go for a 0.35 pen for the outline of this part. That'll be light, that'll be light, uh, so that'll be light, and so this will be my only other heavy pen. And so I'll just draw invisible lines over the floor. So where's my invisible lines gone? Yeah, invisible lines. Um, right, so just following these edges here because I don't want to see these these lines. There we go. And then I'll just duplicate this fill pattern and we'll call it concrete uh, cut and I'll choose the exact pattern that I've used for the floor which would be concrete and that's it so that's filling in the gap
I've got still the edge of the um, stair and the floor here, but you've got the line work option for that. So on the modify panel, if you haven't seen this one, it's just in the view section. There we are. So again, invisible lines, and I can set this and this. Uh, that's that's my section or my sorry, that's my Oh that's my level. That's okay. So the line for the level or is it the floor? Anyhow. You can fix that later. But you can see there that's that looks almost as though if I go especially the hidden line, it looks almost as though the stair and the floor other one thing now, and actually the reason I've got the um, the division is because I haven't set the floor material to be concrete yet. So I'll just choose the same thing now. There we go. Ah, so it hasn't got a cut pattern. That's great. Oh, yes, it does. Okay, so we don't have, um, fine, there we are. Okay, so now the floor's got the same pattern as the stair, but the key to it is just that little filled region, this area here. Just like drawing a hatch pattern in um, AutoCAD. And so it's, co it's actually a common issue with concrete stairs, and I see a lot of people fiddling around for hours trying to model all these things in 3D when really you're only going to see it in one or two sections at most. So it's often easier just, again, so you've got the same problem here, and here, here, on every stair, every time it meets the floor. And once you've done that little hack pan or region, you can copy it as well to all those other levels. Right, and it will fit in the same spot. So it's, again, it's just getting um, into the habit of thinking in the way you draw in, say, AutoCAD and not always trying to do it in 3D because um, a lot of things with BIM don't really make sense in 3D. And fire stairs are a good example. You're only going to see fire stairs, like I said, in the section view and in the plan. It's just going to be a very simple layout as well. So don't go too overboard with the modelling. Just use the modelling, the 3D models that you get, um, where it's going to help you. So it helps you do a quick section, but to finish off all those little things, 2D is usually better. And uh, same with a lot of your other drawings. Yep. Yeah, that's right. Just get your drawings to look right by drawing over the top where you need to. Um, and mostly with 2D tools like regions. And uh, like I was saying, there are ways of making it perfect in 3D, but uh, it's probably unnecessary. Uh, well, maybe I won't do too much more of this today because um, that should give you enough to um, at least do fire stairs, but maybe even start to do your uh, access stair.